further ado, I know most of you who are here today already know him. He's, uh, he's a regular. Uh, he's a regular because he's a family. He is, uh, their church is also part of the Assemblies of God. And we, as FLC, is also part of the Assemblies of God. So I'm glad that we are part of this fellowship. So I can always call on somebody, you know, if we needed help. We are not alone. You know, we are together. And together we are stronger. And I'm glad that I'm surrounded by these godly people in my life that in moments that I needed help, I could always call on them the way I call on God. Amen. So let us welcome Pastor Oscar Monchel this morning. I'm hugging you, Pastor. I mean that. I'm hugging you. Amen. How many are excited to be here this morning? Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. Don't be afraid. Amen. God is so good. He is so good. He's so good. I want to just say, Pastor Sam, you're meant for TV, man. You are, you just have this passion and he has this charisma that is all Jesus. And I, I'm always appreciative of it. It encourages me. It always calls me up higher. That's what I love about my relationship with Pastor Sam and Pastor Mel and the entire CFLC family is they always call you up. They always challenge your life and your walk with the Lord. And I'm so grateful for that. And so today I just want to acknowledge you all as a family of Christ that is here today, those that are online. I know, I know this has been a difficult time but what better time to shine as the body of Christ than in difficult times? What better time to be the family of Christ? Amen. If there's ever a time that the world needs Christ family life, it's right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you ever wondered, Lord, what is our purpose and what is our reason in this world? And it's times like this. When the times were not this way before COVID and before some of the challenges that we face hit us, we were an enjoyable fellowship, we were serving, we were doing the work of the Lord. But today, in this hour and in this season, I believe with all of my heart that God is choosing this hour to even lift you up and raise you up and be a mighty voice in your community and in your family and in your world. Can I get an amen? So God bless you all today for being who Christ called you to be for such a time as this. What an honor to be here, of course, with my lovely Veronica. We have just been honored to be considered a part of this family and to be a regular. That is a powerful blessing to know that we are considered and we are looked to in times of need. And, you know, oftentimes I'm here when Pastor Sam is traveling and so, or if he's busy or he's not able to be present, so what an extra, extra trip, a gift it is to have uh, the presence of him here with me and with my, my wife as we're able to share the word to him and to you all. Amen. So let's pray real quickly as we get into the word. I don't want to take much more time but with preliminaries, but Lord, we just ask that you come in your own special way, Lord, and you make yourself known and real in this time of your word, Lord, we need you today. Our world needs you. Our nation needs you, Lord. And you know, even though we're praying for so many different fronts, Lord, health, we're praying for politics and the nation, we're praying for finances, we're praying for individuals, God, Lord, what we do not want to, what we do not want to neglect or is that as we pray more than anything, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, Lord. Let thy kingdom come in the midst of blessing or in the midst of tragedy. Let your, your, your kingdom come in plenty and in want, Lord. Let your kingdom come, Lord, whether it be, be near or whether we be far. Bless the reading of your word today and bless all the ears that would hear that are here present and those that are online and those that are afar off. Let your word be, Lord, that power and that force that brings transformation and change in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said an amen, right? And an amen. Praise the Lord. I had the privilege of listening 
to Pastor Sam share last week, and I was so blessed and touched. I says, you know, I really want to go a little bit with that message, so I'm piggybacking off of your message, Pastor Sam, and I want to thank the Lord for that. But he talked a little bit about how wise men still seek God. Well, I thought that was so profound. How amazing is that? And I'm going to say that here again. But wise men still seek God. But what about the men that God still seeks? Those whom he still calls. The shepherd's call, if you will. The calling of God upon those who he goes after. The wise men had an approach to the calling of God. But the shepherds also had a very unique calling as well. You see, the time was, had come to unveil the greatest news story ever. And it is the story that would forever ruin the devil's agenda for mankind. Can I get an amen? And that would transform the entire world. The Messiah was to be born. But here's what's so amazing to me, even as I listened to, to the message last week. Here's what's so amazing is God sent his angels with this amazing news as we're used to in our culture and our society, it didn't come through the elite media or it didn't come through these high-level notifications. God, he, he's, he didn't send this to anyone else, but he sent it through his angels, not to the Bible scholars or to the teachers, not to the theologians or to the scribes or to the Pharisees, not even to the priests, the prophets, or the kings, or the aristocracy, or the higher of the highest. But the, the Bible says, but in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields. In Luke chapter 2, verse 8. It says, in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. You see, wise men still seek God, but God sought shepherds that were out in the field watching over their flocks. Now in those times, shepherds were the bottom rung of the social ladder. They were Jewish shepherds. They probably had understood the law of Moses and they understood all of the history of the Jewish people, of God's people up until that time. But because of their station and because of their, of their work, they were considered on the outcasts. They were despised. They were considered to be untrustworthy for whatever those reasons were. But God chose them to be carriers of his glory. I don't know about you, but that sounds familiar to me. That feels so familiar to my life. It's because when I looked around in my life and I saw all of the people that seemed so much fit and so worthy to be called, yet he called me. Has anyone ever felt that way before? God chose them to be carriers of his glory. And there's good news, friends. There's good news. We are living in the last days. How many believe that we're living in the last days? Now, we've heard this before, haven't we? But I believe that in the heart of God's people, in the spirit of his children, there is a sensing and a knowing, a, 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 a sense of urgency that this time that we're in is a lot closer than what we've ever been before. But this is the good news that we are living in the last days and God is revealing his glory to men in a manner like never before. You ever notice that when God wants to reveal his glory, he does it each time like he's never done it before. And I feel that we as the church have to be very careful. Because we, we can grow custom to the way the society that we live in expects news to come and expects things to happen. And we can be so set in our minds that if it doesn't happen according to that norm, that it may be something that we won't accept or receive. But God is saying to us today in this hour that I am going to entrust the secrets of heaven with my people like never before. How many want to be entrusted with the secrets of heaven? God wants to reveal his glory in a manner like never before. That should encourage us. 
in this day. That should encourage us in this hour, especially since we are facing and we are looking at a world where things are happening at an unprecedented level and in unprecedented ways. How many know that there's still nothing more unprecedented than God's ability to come upon the scene and do things that we can't even think or imagine, and it will be God 100%, amen? He's still able to shock us. He's still able to surprise us. He's still able to give us something so profound and so miraculous. Even though we think that we've seen it all, God says, you have not seen nothing yet. Amen. And that's a good thing. Do not be feared by that. Do not get, be afraid by that, but be excited that God is willing and ready to show his glory to each and every one of us. Truly what was happening in this day when he, was, when he came to the, to the uh, shepherds through the angels, he was merely, all he was seeking was someone after his own heart. Is there anybody here who could say, all I am seeking is the heart of the Lord? All I am seeking is that, is him, is his face. Because you know that that's the only qualification that you need? It's the only qualification that they had other than they were shepherds. They still smelt like shepherds. They still looked like shepherds. They still had a bunch of smelly sheep around them. And I'm not calling you all smelly if you consider yourself a sheep. But if you're willing to be used by God, God is more than willing to use you. I believe that is one of the reasons why he came to the shepherds. Because he knew something about their character that looked a lot like his. What was in him, he saw, was also in them. Did you know that that's why God calls us? Because he sees what's inside of you. And he says, they don't see it yet. They don't believe it yet. But man, the things that they do are some of the things that I would do. Think about that for a moment. We're so, we're so hard on ourselves. The Lord is saying, no, don't be so hard on yourself. Some of those qualities that you reject about you are actually some of the things that I would actually do. We get mad at the world. We get passionate about the things going on around us, and, and we get upset. Well, I got upset. No, the Lord is passionate about the things that are going on in the world, just like you are. As a matter of fact, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9 says it like this. It says, for the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong for those who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. Come on. When he looked upon these shepherds to reveal this message to about the birth of, 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 of his son, he had not just glanced he had been roaming and looking and he was looking upon the earth and his eyes landed ironically upon those who were operating in the trade that is the nature that he carries within himself that would be the very nature of the sun can you imagine that the lord's eyes landed upon shepherds to witness the birth of a lamb isn't that something? He says, I'm going to go and reveal myself to these shepherds, the secret of the birth of my son, who will be the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the earth. I wondered if these shepherds recognized anything in Jesus that they, that they, would, that they had seen before. They were shepherds, and he was a lamb. Something to ponder, perhaps. And I remember as we heard recently of how the wise men still seek God, I said, that's so amazing. I, I want to be that kind of a man and that kind of an individual that seeks God. What an awesome truth that to know that those who chase God are wise. Those who diligently seek him will encounter him. Can I get an amen? You see, the Christmas story shows us how God is sought by men, but he also seeks men for his purpose and his call. You ever see that Uncle Sam picture that says, looking for a few good men or women? God is still looking for a few good men or women. He is seeking. His eyes roam throughout the earth. See, the Christmas story is, an also, is also a good reminder is that God calls us 
in different ways and at different times. And I want to just, before I get into my points here, I want to just share this. See, Luke tells us that on the night Jesus was born, as we just said, a group of unsuspecting shepherds worked in the field. We know the story well. Out of the blue, an angel appeared and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. Who wouldn't be? Has anybody ever encountered an angel and was not scared? Anybody here? You're right. Okay, great. And I don't want men, I don't want you to say your wife, okay? Yes, I encountered my wife 25 years ago. No, okay. And the angel announced the joyous news of the birth of the Savior. And he told the shepherds where to find the baby. And the call couldn't have been more clear or direct. The angel came, told them where to go and what to do, and they went and did it. Yet, and the wise men had a very different experience. They were well-educated, and somehow they knew that a change in the sky indicated the birth of a new king. Well, how did they know that? They were logical. They were studious. They knew the ancient prophecies, and they were looking. So maybe they were not, in essence, even as Pastor Sam had shared, these weren't believers. These weren't people who were following after the things of, of religion. But you know something? How many times have you heard the story of a seeker seeking even to, to, to dispel or even to disprove, and their seeking led them to the truth? Like the Magi, like, the, like these wise men, they were on a, a, a seeking adventure. They were on an exploration and a discovery adventure. And all of these things were leading them to the Lord. Let me tell you something. Not one moment of their seeking or their searching was not ever the drawing of the Lord. Because he calls us all in special and different ways. And just as he appeared to the shepherds and he gave them direct news and he gave them direct instructions, he also went to the wise men and he, he drew them through their knowledge and through their understanding of the stars and of the ancient readings. And they were able to follow after that. And guess what all of that did? Sometimes the Lord calls us directly, but sometimes he draws us to the place of his presence. And I believe that moments and at times in our journey, we've all been called with a specific calling, but many times we've also been drawn by experiences, drawn by what we know and by what we understand. You see, although they had a call, their path was not as clear as the shepherds, amen? They did what was right according to how they understood. Many of us, many of us have that story. You see, the difference between the Magi and the shepherds is just that, is how they were once, one group was approached directly and the other was approached through logic and through their knowledge and through their understand. But it was the Lord who was drawing them all of the time. So I asked this question, what was so special about these shepherds that the Lord chose them, that God chose them to reveal this story and this message first. Well, in my own study and in my own recollection, what I believe is they, the first thing was that they were keeping watch. According to Luke chapter 2, verse 8, it says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch. They were watching over their flock by night. You see, while the entire world was deep in sleep in the warmth of their beds, these shepherds were out in the cold of night watching over their flocks. Isn't that amazing? They were out in the cold, and they did this night after night, season after season. There was something in them that this was a natural thing to them. You see, God is looking to reveal his heart to men and women who are not comfortable in the comfort of the world. I want you to know, being out in the cold night after night is not comfortable. Not only that, but it wasn't just that they were out in the cold. It was they were not out in the cold for themselves. They were out in the cold for their sheep. Because I tell you something right now, if I'm out in the cold just for myself, I'm coming back in. But these sheep, 
needed protection from wolves and from, even as David said, from lions and from bears, who was himself a shepherd. Remember the story of David saying, hey, Goliath ain't that bad. I've taken a lion, I've taken a sheep out of a lion's mouth and out of a bear. I've wrestled in them and I've taken them down. So how many know it's not easy to be a shepherd? I'm sure Pastor Sam has probably released some of his own sheep from a lion or a bear or two. Amen? Anybody can say amen to that? Were you guys ever in the mouth of a lion or a bear? Okay. They were keeping watch. There's something about the heart of God that is a keeper over those. Psalms 121 verse 4 says it like this. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. You see, he is a keeper. His heart was drawn to these shepherds because he understood the nature of a keeper. He understood the nature of someone who stands watch in the midnight hour of our life, in the darkest seasons of our journey, those who keep watch. He says, I'm going to reveal my heart to those who are watchers over the vulnerable, watchers over the weak. I believe another reason why he called them for keeping watch, because those who are keeping watch, they're prayers. How many prayer warriors do we have here today? How many prayer warriors and intercessors do we have watching today? Those who are praying. Those who are interceding. In this hour, even with the virus and with so many other dynamics, how many of us have just been interceding? I saw a recent post by Pastor Mel saying we must be steadfast in the reading and in the trusting in the Psalms of 91. What a powerful psalm that we have to lean into and trust into for the promises of the Lord. They were keeping watch. God is looking for people who have the shepherd's heart. Just as Jesus even said in John 10 verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. I want you to know something, church. Sometimes we never thought this before, did we? We never realized that coming to church was almost like laying down our lives. Coming out to the supermarket, it almost isn't like laying down our lives anymore. But look at we're here today, and many of you who are watching today, you understand it in your journey. You understand it in the steps that you take every day. But Jesus wants to reveal his heart to those who understand the voice of God and who are willing to lay down their lives for their sheep. You know what that also means? It's coming into a place in our lives where we live a life of sacrifice, not just unto ourselves, but unto one another. Amen? That means my sheep's life, it just as the one who goes after the lion and the bear. That means that my sheep's life is more valued to me than my life. You see, that's countercultural. That's counter-society. Because in our society, everything is one for another. I'm taking mine, and this is for me. I'm going to get mine. i got to take out for me. And I'm not saying there's not a moment where you have to prioritize your needs. But oh, most of the time, we're, we're, we're prioritizing our needs because they represent how we care for others. I need that extra bag of potatoes because I'm, my neighbor might need four or five potatoes. You see what I'm saying? I'm not doing it just out of selfishness. When I am doing things because the needs of others are more valuable than the needs of me. And in our praying, that we're not just praying for our needs, but we're interceding for the, prayer, for the needs of others, but also for the agenda of the Holy Spirit. Lord, what is it that you desire? Just as Jesus prayed in the garden, Lord, I know that this is tough. Physically, I'm in anguish. I can't do this anymore. Is it possible that you take this cup? But if you notice, his prayer turned immediately. But not my will, thy will be done. Hallelujah. Another reason why he sought the shepherds is because they were seeking the Messiah. They were seeking the Messiah. Luke 2.15 says, When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see the things that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They were seeking. 
If I have to share the deep secret of my heart with someone, I would choose to share it with someone who values it. They had in their heart and in their mind, they, are, they were seekers already. They wanted to get close. They wanted to know. I believe they were waiting for some type of a revelation or some type of a, of, of a notice from heaven. I believe God revealed the good news of the birth of Jesus to these shepherds because they valued it and were desperately looking for it. How many of you have been desperately looking for God's heart? to be revealed to you in this hour. Lord, not my heart, not my will. What is it that you would have us do, Lord? What is it that you would have us say in this hour? Because I believe, just like the shepherds, that in this hour, God is about ready to reveal his presence like never before again. Some call it the great awakening. Some call it another revival. Some call it, I don't care what it is. I just want the Lord to know that I want him to share it with me because I want to share it with others. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. You see, we can't just say I would love to see We have to do what these shepherds did. The shepherds said to one another, let us go over and see. Let us not just desire to seek him, but let us step up out of the comfort of our own environment and step into the places of risk. You know the greatest miracles take place where we step out of comfort into risk? You know, the greatest change and transformation comes when we step out of the place that we're standing and a little bit off. You know, you can't walk on water if you don't get out of the boat. You cannot walk on water if you don't get out of the boat. You cannot take out a giant if you don't step into the field of battle. There are certain things that we have to realize that God is saying, if you want to see me, you got to seek me. Can I get an amen? Amen. And those who seek me diligently find me. I want you to know something. If you become, if we become seekers of God in a diligent, deep way, we will find him. But I feel like sometimes in my life, the times that have been the most challenging at times, I've shrunk back from. You see, in our diligent seeking, we can't shrink back. We have to step forward, even in the apprehension of our flesh. Even when we don't know, and even in uncertainty. Those are the places that we have to break into. Because uncertainty and doubt and fear, those are the enemy trying to keep us from getting into the place where God will reveal himself even deeper to us like never before. So if you ever find yourself saying, I was so close, I got so near, I wanted to see him, but if something took place or something happened that I was not able to break into that place, I want you to know something. You were right on the, you were on the threshold of your miracle. You were on the threshold of that powerful revelation. But it is oftentimes fear and anxiety and stress and all of these negative things that come against us that keep us from seeing the promise of God revealed. And I would encourage you, do not be deterred or pushed back by the the pressure that comes against you when you are pressing in. That's why they call it pressing in. Because it's not easy. That's why they call it breakthrough. You know, they don't call it enter through. They don't call it run through. They don't call it light through. They don't call it open door through. They call it breakthrough. Because it's the thing we have to break break there's a absolute conflict there's a little bit of tension that has to be broken before we see that and I encourage you today I believe that is why God went to these shepherds that is why he's coming to us is because he knows that we are able he knows that we're fighters he knows that we have it in our heart to see his face and if we would just press in he will show up amen and the next thing you know, because they sought the Messiah, they sought him. The next thing you know, they have, they're surrounded by a great company of angels. Another reason was they were obedient. You know, we wonder why doesn't God seek me? I don't know, but I know one reason why he will seek you to do what he calls you to do is because if we're obedient. It says here, and they went with haste. 
Somebody say, with haste. They went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. They had just gotten instructions. They were just told something specific to do, and they went and did it. Wow. Is that a new concept or what? I got told to do something, and I did it. And I saw what I was supposed to see. As soon as the angels announced the good news to the shepherds, the Bible says they hurried off to see what they heard. They hurried off. Another version of the Bible says they ran across the fields. I'm telling you something right now. I don't look like somebody who runs. But I want you to know something. If the Lord comes to me (laughs) through an angel, I promise you that's the day that I begin running. They hurried, the Bible says. The truth is they were so desperate that they didn't want for the sun to rise. They weren't even bothered about how far this manger was. But their response was instant obedience. I'm going to say that one more time. Their response was instant obedience obedience. That's tough for us sometimes, but we need to break into a place where we, we, when God says go, we don't say, we don't ask questions, we just go. Because delayed obedience is disobedience. Can I say that again? Delayed obedience is disobedience. Ecclesiastes 5.4, and I apologize, gentlemen, if I did not give you the scripture But Ecclesiastes 5, 4 says, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you owe. But the key optimal word in that moment there in Ecclesiastes 5, 4 is do not delay. Another word for delay is procrastinate. Do not procrastinate. What we need to get out of our soul, what we need to work out of our mind, are all of the reasons why we procrastinate. That's another message. We won't talk about that today. But when we procrastinate, there are usually issues, and there are usually hang-ups, and there are usually mental blocks, spiritual, emotional blocks that keep us from pressing in to obedience. But remember this, delay is still... uh, uh, Delayed obedience is still disobedience, okay? And so what about their sheep? They trusted God to take care of their sheep while they were away. We, we might ask oh, that question. Sheep there, I thought they were shepherds. I want you to know something. There's a time when you're a shepherd, but there's a time when you're also a son of the Most High God. And when, if you're a son of the Most High God, that means daddy's got everything under control. If I call you to come, you just come. I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to take care of what's yours. How many understand that? If God says, I need you to do this, I promise you, he's got everything under control. He's already thought about all of the logistics. He's already thought about all of the dynamics. He's saying, come forth, because I have a plan for you. And if I have a plan for you, I have a plan for all that you care about, all that you love, all of your provisions, all of your purposes. I have a plan. See, God is looking to reveal his heart to his children who would instantly obey him. This is my word right now. This is a word for Oscar right now. How many understand that God just wants us to say yes? What's the scripture say? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. But oftentimes our yes is, yeah, I think so. Or uh, I'm not sure, maybe not. The Lord says yes be yes or your no be no. But who would run to his presence? Who would run to his presence? God is looking for shepherds like this. People like these shepherds that would run to his presence. That that would run to his presence. Run to look. They would make haste. And in this day and in this hour, we cannot delay any longer. The time is short. We must make haste to his presence. Also, they became the carriers of the good news. When we, did we even realize the day that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? The day that he revealed himself to us in his mercy and his grace? Did we ever believe that we would become the carriers of the good news? Luke 2, 17 and 18 says, And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it, 
wondered at what the shepherds told them. Isn't that so cool? That the moment they got this message and they reacted in obedience, the, the obedience that they operated in, it clicked inside of them and it became a part of their nature. And now they were carriers of this powerful message. I'll tell you something right now. There's no virus that can spread as powerfully and as life transforming as the message once we are carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You want to spread good news. You want to spread healing. You want to spread transformation. Be a carrier of the good news of the message of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? You see, once the shepherds saw the baby Jesus, they began to share the good news with others. How many of you have ever gotten a word from the Lord and it comes to pass and you can't stop talking about it because it was revealed to them? And the people who heard the news were amazed. Remember, when God gives you a word, more often than not, it is not for you to keep, but it's for you to share. Even those words that seem personal, even those words that God gives you that are directly for your life, they're only for your life to bring the transformation that is needed for you, but they also allow you to become a, character, a, a, a carrier of that transformation for someone else around you. Remember, and as you do that, people will be amazed because they will realize that it is not the unpolished and unqualified shepherd who is speaking, but it is God speaking. I want to tell you something. Transformation comes when you and me, the simple shepherd people of God, the simple shepherd people of God who just choose to be carriers of this good news and we share the good news. You know, the disciples who were also carriers of the good news, the disciples, they were said, these men are not learned, but they speak like learned men. These men don't have degrees in theology and philosophy, but when they speak, the things that come out of their mouths are like, are like philosophical. They are so profound and they're so deep. Yet they're simple fishermen. Yet they're simple shepherds. The Lord is saying to you and I today, he's like, I'm not looking for those in high stations. I'm looking for those who would be willing to go obediently, who would be willing to be carriers of my good news. Are you willing to be a carrier of the good news? Pastor Sam alluded to the message going to the Philippines. The Philippines needs carriers of the good news of Jesus Christ. Our people, our people's Mexico, they need carriers of the good news of Jesus Christ. The United States of America. We should be praying, Lord, send missionaries to the, to the United States. And I think one statistic I heard not too long ago is that the United States used to be the greatest exporter of missions in the world. And now we have become one that is receiving missionaries back into its own uh, territories. And we have missionaries coming back into the United States, reaching our people, reaching the younger generations. So we have to go from being a receiver of the blessing to being a carrier of it. We've all been blessed to receive this beautiful message of, of Christ, but we also have to be now a, a, a giver, a, a returner of it, to be a receiver of the blessing, to a carrier of it. Amen. Have you ever watched football? And Can you imagine seeing Patrick Peterson or, or Christian Kirk back there receiving the football, and he just stops, he just drops it? No, you got to receive it. And then you got to carry it to its destination, which is the, the touchdown, you see. Romans 10, 15, and these last two scriptures, brothers, I didn't give to you, but Romans 10, 15, I woke up in the morning and the message changed a little bit. But Romans 10, 15 says, and how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You get a spiritual pedicure when you carry the good news because the Bible says your feet are beautiful. Amen. That's why I wear my feet covered because you don't want to see these toes, friends. But I'm so grateful what the, what the Bible says. The Bible says that my feet are beautiful. Amen. So maybe I can wear sandals now. No? Okay, no. Okay, I won't wear sandals. My wife's saying, please don't. <laughs> How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. 
What a gift that we carry when we bring the good news. These shepherds had the greatest experience of their life, and that experience transformed them so much that they became carriers. And now we will always and we should always, it is a part of our spiritual armor to be carriers of the good news as according to Ephesians 6.13. We are not just carriers of the good news, but it is a part of our spiritual armor. We should always, according to the scripture of Ephesians 6.15, and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. How many wake up and you put on, your, 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 you fit your feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace? Wherever I walk today, Lord, let me be a carrier of your good news. That's why the Lord chose the shepherds. is because he knew when they had the experience of seeing the birth of the Lord Jesus, after having encou been encountered by angels and having been encountered, encountered with this amazing truth, once they had that experience, their life would be transformed. And from that day forward, he knew they would live their life fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. I tell you something right now, church, if we want to see the world change like never before, we must in our spiritual armor wear and be ready with our feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. Amen? At all times. At all times. And lastly, I think this is the most important and most profound. And it says that they returned glorifying and praising God. You see, Luke 2.20 says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. It was such a powerful experience to see not just what they said was true, but how it was revealed and how they were the witnesses of the birth of the Savior of the world. And so they returned you know, here's, I, I could also add to this, just in this moment. It says, they returned glorifying and praising God, but here was the key. They returned glory and praise back to God. You see, God trusted the shepherds because they, he knew that no matter what they experienced, how glorious, how powerful, how anointing, how it made them feel, how people looked amazed at them and said, oh my God, look at how God is using you. They still returned glory and praise unto God. You see, God will use us when every time he uses this vessel, this vessel always returns praise and glory. Lord, I don't care how high or how low, God, I'm going to return glory and praise unto you no matter what. And these, these, and these shepherds did just that. They continued, and here's what happens. This is how you know they will return glory and praise back unto the Lord, is when they went back, they went back to their flocks. They went back to their city. They went back to their town. They didn't go in and say, hey, we're moving to Bethlehem. This is where it's happening. This is where the new great move is going. They said, no, we're the new great move. We're the new next anointed thing. We're the next blessing happening on the earth because we're the carriers. And he says, and the scripture says that they continued they returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. They didn't seek publicity. They didn't say, call Channel 3, Veronica. We need to let them see what they're They didn't care about that. They didn't seek the applause of men. Nor were they worried about the scorn of men. They got back to their sheep. The Lord says, I can trust them to be obedient with my word. And I can trust them to be obedient with my work. I'm going to say that again. He says, I can trust them to be obedient with my word, but I can also trust them to be obedient with my work. You see, we know the Lord is about to come soon, but the promise of the Lord is I will come, but occupy yourselves until I come. Because when he returns, he asks, will I find faith upon the earth? Will I find the actions of faith being lived out in my people when I return? 
Or will they be elsewhere? Or will, will they be hiding? Or will they be running? Or will they have seen my glory? Will they have seen and experienced my presence? And they'll be about the work of the kingdom. Jesus said it as a young boy of 12 years old. He says, Mother, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? Although I am in the temple and I am encountering great theological discussions and great experiences and I'm about these things, I must also still be about the work of heaven. And he will entrust us. And they got busy praising and thanking God. No matter what is going on in our world, if we stay busy praising and thanking God, I went back a little bit in the in the in the shows that you in the in the in the services, and I remember the Thanksgiving message about being thankful and continuing to thank God in all things. As we see in the story of Christmas, we see the the shepherds, and we see the the, the wise men, and we see God calls us so uniquely. Some calls are clear. As, and, and as unexpected as the one the shepherds received on the hillside so long ago, other times we must wait and watch for a subtle shift in the sky. Then we have to do our best to follow the signs as we seek to determine where the path will lead us. But I would say to us today, as we near the end of our year, let's learn from these shepherds. Let's learn from these wise men. And let's seek the call of God and choose to continue to seek the presence of God with hunger, with obedience, with zeal and with excitement, with faithfulness, with praise and with thanksgiving, but yet with hearts of humility. And where we could say, Lord, I know that you can use me. I know that you've called me for such a time as this. I want to be faithful. Who wants to be faithful to the call of the Lord in this hour and in this time? Church, if there's a moment in time that God needs us to be faithful, if there's a moment in time in history, I would even say, where you and I, as children of God, are looked upon and called upon, he's counting on us. Don't you dare think for one moment that God does not count on you. He, he needs you to be a carrier. He needs you to be obedient. Don't delay. Go forth in the promises and in the truths of his presence. For unto us a child is born. Come on. He is here. And his presence is, is real. And he's revealing himself still today to so many. Guess what? It's not just a holiday. Today, around the world, this month, around the world, all the way up until the 25th, I know that our Jewish brothers and sisters have been experiencing the eight days, I believe it is, of Hanukkah, and they're celebrating, and we as Christians are celebrating the birth of Jesus. What a time to be a carrier of the message of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter who believes it or who likes it. In this hour, your only responsibility, my only responsibility is say, yes, I am celebrating this time of the birth. It doesn't matter if it, if it was supposed to be in March or if it was supposed to be in, in April. It doesn't matter. The truth of the matter is the earth needed a Savior. And God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And even though the world expected the birth of the Messiah to be with trumpets, to be with, with horns and pomp and circumstances, can you imagine a God who the first sound of his son's birth was the crying of a baby in a manger? He says, I've come to men that men would receive me. We receive him today. Will you receive him new in your heart today? You don't have to have sinned to say, Lord, I received this message fresh today. Thank you for coming to me and calling me to be a carrier of this beautiful message. 
Jesus, the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. What a message the world needs today. Emmanuel, God is with us. It doesn't matter what is happening on the earth. God is with us. Put your hand on your heart with me today. And just say, God with us. God with me. He is with us. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll forever be with you. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending your son as the ultimate act of love upon the world. Thank you for allowing us to experience you through him a crying baby in a manger was the first sound that said salvation has come to the earth and now we are forever changed so I pray the blessing and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon each and every one of you the Lord bless you today and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you the Lord be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his face towards you all today in your homes and in your families and wherever you may be and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, our banner. Amen. And amen. Pastor Sam, thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor O, for the wonderful message. We all arise this moment as we become like those shepherds that keep watch. They seek the Messiah. They become obedient. And most of all, the very last one, although you're going to keep the one for last, they give God the glory. They give God the praise. So as we close this service, let us just sing one more song once again. And let us just give God the glory, the praise, and the honor that He alone deserves before we close the service. Never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love.
thing that remains is that the love of God for us never changed and it will never fade away. One of the best things that I remember from Pastor Oscar's sermon this morning about the shepherds is that they became carriers of the good news. And it is my prayer that for all of us today as people of God, that we will not be known as people that carry viruses or germs because people doesn't want to come to us. But let us be known as people that carry the good news of God. That in this season, this is the best opportunity for us to share that good news. That God so loved the world and He gave His one and only Son. And whosoever believes in Him will not perish, will not die, but will live forevermore in Jesus' name. And that is the great news of Christmas. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray for Pastor Oscar and his wife for the ministry. Father God, I thank you for this man of God, Lord, for being a shepherd, Lord, that you have called, for being obedient and keeping watch, Lord, and most of all, for being a carrier of the good news of God. And I pray, Lord, that you to bless him and anoint him, Lord, and expand his reach and influence and ministry that more people, Lord God, will be blessed in the ministry that you have called him and placed him together with his wife. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. May, you, may we see you again next Sunday. May God bless you and keep you. And may His face shine upon you and give you peace. See you next Sunday. Amen.